Hello everyone and welcome to another video. Today we are going to be looking at my first official PC build for my new PC building business. I have here a Dell Optiplex 7050. It is a small form factor PC built on the sixth generation of Intel's core processors. This particular one has a core i5-6500 CPU built in, as well as eight gigabytes of DDR4 RAM. I bought this used on eBay. I also managed to snag some upgrade parts for this build. The listing for the computer itself was just a bare bones listing with nothing more than the CPU and the two gig, two sticks of DDR4 RAM totaling eight gigabytes. So I went in hunt of a graphics card that could fit in a low profile case, as well as a decent NVMe SSD in order to populate the one NVMe slot built into the motherboard. This was actually a welcome surprise when I first opened the case as I was not sure if there would be any upgrade paths for storage beyond getting a traditional two and a half inch drive from a hopefully reputable dealer on eBay or elsewhere. For the um, single NVMe drive, I went with a 256 gigabyte SK Hynix NVMe drive. It is a pretty decent, um, I guess, option for a lot of people. It has not a whole lot of storage, but it has just enough that if you want to put some crucial programs on it, rather than having it on the slower mechanical hard drive, it will work just fine. That being said, I would probably recommend a further upgrade to a one terabyte SSD further along. For the graphics card, I went with an AMD R7 450. This is the four gigabyte variant of DDR of GDDR5 memory. It has two DisplayPort ports and no HDMI ports, so there will be a need for an adapter. I do believe I have one laying around that I will probably include in the box. Now, moving on to specifications. This is an i5-6500 clocked at 3.2 gigahertz. And while this may not be too powerful in today's standards, for its day, it was actually pretty, pretty decent, and it will be useful in gaming. Now, paired with the R7-450, there is a bottleneck on the graphics card side. However, I do believe that there are plentiful options for an upgrade down the line that a customer may be able to pursue. That being said, I wasn't planning to build the highest level gaming rig possible in a small form factor PC, but rather I was hoping to use the small amount of money I had in order to build a system that could be used in order to seed future builds that would gain more income. <clears throat> to that end, I have also included several um, DRM-free copies of games that I have purchased in the past and have had just languishing because I do not play them or use them. I bought them through... Um, good old games. So therefore I will remove those from my library and I will just allow those to be used by the customer. That being said, let's get into the benchmarks for gaming. So first of all, I decided to try a bit of a higher end game. I went with Assassin's Creed Odyssey. This game is demanding even on later hardware 
So I imagined that this would be not the smoothest of processes. However, the success was actually greater than I anticipated. Barely being able to gather and gain about 30 FPS, at least most of the time. The built-in benchmark had the average frame rate at 30 FPS, with highs in the low 40s and then lows in the low 20s. That being said, this is not exactly a stable system. However, if you wish, you can game some newer titles on this rig. I also went ahead and played a little bit of the beginning levels of the game to see if maybe having more models on screen would dip the frame rate further. And I am happy to say that while it did dip down into the low 20s, it did not go below 20 FPS. So it seems to be a relatively useful system. I'm sure with resolution scaling, you could actually gain a few more FPS and maybe even gain a solid 30 FPS most of the time. However, I wasn't willing to push it much further for the fear of breaking something. That being said, I then did some other gaming tests with a couple of other titles, including Deus Ex Human Revolution. And with low presets, it did gain about 45 FPS. However, I could not capture this because my, because my DSLR decided to die on me from overheating. That being said, I did get some footage of Genshin Impact. If this thing cannot play Genshin Impact, I don't want to sell it. Because honestly, if it can't play one of my favorite games that is also free to play, it's not worth giving to anyone. So, that being said, I was able to manage... The system was able to manage a solid 30 FPS, and then, with the frame rate unlocked, was even able to manage almost 45 FPS, which is wonderful. That being said, Genshin is not the most demanding title. However, it is also not the least demanding title. Speaking of the least demanding titles, I did want to do some emulation to see if maybe that was something that would push the bottleneck further. Now, this being said, I did not expect many troubles, as most titles were from the N64 and backwards that I have in my collection. That being said, all the emulators that I was able to run ran well, and there were very few issues. Now, I did run into some problems when it came to adding filters through RetroArch's systems. However, if I didn't push the system too far, it actually went very well. That being said, is this a high-end gaming system? Definitely not. It is most, most sincerely, it is a entry-level option for those that cannot afford much more than maybe $200 on a system. That being said, I will be pricing it at around market rate, which is about 175 USD. That being said, I will be open to offers of as low as 145, just to be able to gain some of my money back and be able to use it for the next build. That being said, I am also switching out my graphics card in my main computer with a lower-end card. This because I have found that my RTX 2060 is actually being bottlenecked by my 6-core <laughs> Horizon 5 30, 3600, I think, or something like that. Anyway, it's a 6-core 12-thread CPU, but evidently it is way too underpowered for my RTX card. That being said, I am downgrading to a GTX 780, and this will be coming in tomorrow, and then I will be able to use the RTX 2060 in order to gain another around $145 to $175, depending on market price.
That being said, around $300 to $350 is respectable enough that I think this will be a good starting fund for the business moving forward. That being said, thank you so much for watching the video. Thank you for taking the time to enjoy this, and I hope to see you again soon. Thank you. You know, the love and care that I used in order to put together this PC reminds me of the love and care that Jesus uses when he puts us together in our mother's womb, and later when he puts us back together when we need healing. Jesus does wonderful things for us, and all we have to do is ask him to.